Hey, it's Chessie from Squeege and Ink and welcome back to Printer's Corner. Printer's Corner is where I answer three of your questions that you've given me on social media. We've also introduced a new segment at the end of this video, so stick around after the questions to see what we've got in store. In today's episode, we're gonna be talking about storing emulsion in the fridge and also how to keep your dark room light safe. If you have any questions you'd like answered like this, don't forget to use hashtag Printer's Corner in comments and messages, and I'll pick those up for a future episode. Our first question from today is from Unlimited Chaos 77 and they asked, how long does dual cure really last if you throw it in the fridge? Because I swear the four to eight week thing is a very conservative estimate. That's all I've got for you, crying emoji. I've heard this as well where people think that they can extend the shelf life of their emulsions by putting it in the fridge. And I'm sure for certain emulsions that works and maybe the conditions in their print studio are very humid and hot and all this kind of thing. But for the emulsion that I use, I actually looked up what the storage recommendations are and I would actually damage my emulsion if I put it in the fridge. So all emulsions come with a technical information sheet and you can just scroll down and see what they say about storage. So mine says I need to store it between 20 and 25 degrees ideally and that it should last me about six weeks. I do get what Unlimited Chaos 77 says about them being a little bit conservative with the shelf life of the emulsions. And it just happens that we use our emulsion a lot and I even get through one of those big tubs quite quickly. So I haven't really tested the longest shelf life possible. However, I do actually remember using a couple of old tubs and they're fine but they weren't dual cures. So I would just read the instructions and go by that rather than what everyone else is saying about the fridge. Our second question is from Randy L. Clark and they said, first, I have to tell you, I'm a big fan of yours. I do print t-shirts, but as a hobby and nowhere near the technical degree that you do. That's very kind, Randy. First question, I notice in your darkroom where you coat screens, you have a yellow neon lightning bolt. Does that work as your safe light? Is that safe to use? Second question, do you use water-based inks? If you do, how do you keep the ink from drying in the screens? The lightning bolt that you actually see in our videos is just purely aesthetic. It helps with the lighting of the videos so that we can see a little bit more what we're doing. I'm gonna talk about the safe lights that we use to block UV in the next question in a bit more detail. And then the second part of Randy's question was, how do we keep water-based inks from drying in? And that is a really, really popular question. And our main kind of tips are, make sure you're using uh, the appropriate mesh count. So maybe even lower your mesh if you're finding it drying in a lot. Use a spray bottle with like a misting kind of fine spray and just keep all the ink wet on your screen. And also, in between printing, if you apply a really thick flood of ink, which is like a light application with the squeegee, you're also gonna help the ink not dry into the screen and clog up the mesh and just become a nightmare for your printing. We've actually gone into a lot of depth on that topic over two of our videos. One of them was when we visited Magna Colors and the video is on YouTube and it's called How to Print with Water-Based Inks we visited Magna Colors to learn from the best. And in that video, we go through all the tips and, and you physically see how the people who manufacture the ink want you to use the ink. The second video where we talk about um, our own experience with printing with the water-based inks in our own environment manually is called Manual Screen Printing with Water-Based Inks Small Studio Setup. So that's really handy because obviously in their own controlled environment, Magna Colors use an automatic press and it all looks very easy. So in the second video, I'm trying to show how we do it with a manual setup, which might be a little bit more lined up to what you've got in your studio. Our third and final question is from It's Marcus. And they said, great strokes and cool setup, but aren't you supposed to be in a light safe room? 
Yes, we are. So when we're coating screens, we are actually often in a light safe room, but sometimes the camera doesn't pick it up. But what we're doing is we've got fluorescent tubes on our ceiling and we've put these kind of covers on and they block out the majority of the UV light, which would effectively um, be ruining our screens when they're in storage. So we are actually being good and using UV blockers on our lights, but you might not be able to see them. If you're trying to find lights that are safe to use in your darkroom, you've got two options. You can either cover your fluorescent tubes with a kind of um, extra tube. And for that, you'd type in to Google or something, UV safe light filter sleeve, yellow light, and then you'll get up the results that you need. And we'll put a little link in the description below as well for that. If you haven't got fluorescent tubes at home, which is quite likely, you can also get these little yellow bulbs just to put in a normal domestic socket. And you could get those from Screen Print World using the CRP5 discount code. And they're just called yellow exposure safe bulbs. And they're also gonna do the same thing with blocking out the harmful UV rays that are gonna prematurely expose your screens. You want all the exposing to be done by your exposure unit and not the ambient light around. So to round up this week's question, which is, do I need to coat screens in a dark room? The answer is yes, but it doesn't have to be that dark. You can use a yellow bulb to block out the harmful UV light. Community poll. And we're ready for this week's community poll. And if you want to submit your vote to the community poll, then you can go on our YouTube channel under the community tab and you can see all the different polls and results from previous weeks. This week's question was, what is the best way to screen print a t-shirt? And a massive 71% of people and printers said it was to pull the squeegee. If you agree with that, then let us know in the comments. Or if you're a pusher, then also let us know why you might opt for that type of printing. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Printer's Corner. And don't forget to load me up with more questions using hashtag Printer's Corner. And make sure to submit your answer on our YouTube community polls so that I can read out the results next week. Thank you.